I welcome you all for today's lecture on stress strain curve. Today we are going to discuss how stress strain curve is plotted and how it is used to describe the behavior of the material. Stress strain curve is plotted when a specimen is subjected to tensile test. Here you can see that tensile test specimen. Tensile test is conducted using a universal testing machine. It has two grippers which hold these two extreme ends of the rod and pull it at a uniform rate. So here while we conduct the test, the force is gradually applied and the corresponding strain is measured until the fracture occurs. Stress strain curve is plotted between strain and stress and in which the changes in stress is recorded for the increase in strain. So the stress strain curve is a graph that shows the change in stress as the strain increases. When the specimen is subjected to tensile test, we can get that stress strain relation like this. The various points on the stress strain curve are shown here and they are related with the this specimen okay so this is the original specimen at this point the specimen is subjected to tensile force and the strain increases until this point p and it represents a straight line until the point reaches P from O to P. It is a straight line. This point is proportionality limit. That means from this point to this point, the stress strain curve is a straight line. It obeys the Hooke's law. That means the stress is directly proportional to strain. Okay. So the region under this straight line is used to determine the Young's modulus of the material. That means the slope OP represents the Young's modulus. That means the Young's modulus E is equal to stress divided by strain. Because as we know that stress is directly proportional to strain within the proportionality limit. That is what the Hooke's law says so stress is equal to Young's modulus times strain so this slope represents the Young's modulus of the material and that is equal to stress over strain after this point p we got then another point e that is called as elastic limit until this point also the material has the elastic behavior. However, the, from P to E, it is not a straight line as we have got like one from the O to P. O to P, it is a perfect straight line. From P to E, it is not a straight line. However, the material is capable of regaining its original shape and dimension when the load which is acting on it is completely removed. So this is the elastic limit. After that, we got a point called Y and that is yield stress or yield strength. So the point at which the material starts to deform plastically. So at this point, the material tend to behave like a plastic material from this point onwards that is from Y. So after this point Y, the permanent deformation occurs on the specimen while tensile test is conducted. Okay. So here you can see that it represents the specimen when the stress strain curve reaches the yield stress. That means the deformation that has happened or the elongation that has happened on the specimen become permanent. It couldn't 
regain its shape okay after this point y here you see that a maximum stress value at point u which represents the ultimate stress so what is ultimate stress it is the maximum stress the material can endure before failure and this point f represents the fracture stress it is quite lower than the ultimate stress okay and this region uh, the material become more stronger because of the strain hardening so due to the plastic deformation the material become more stronger and it is capable of withstanding a maximum stress of ultimate stress after this point you see here the necking happen so this region represents necking so here you see that this point the necking start to happen that means there is a reduction in the diameter at this point from the original specimen and the cross sectional area of the material at this point gets reduced continuously and finally the fracture happens okay so from this point the necking process start to happen on the specimen so the cross sectional area gets reduced and finally the fracture happens so this specimen represents the the specimen after the fracture today we understood various sections on the stress strain curve in this lecture thank you for watching